along with me. Isaiah 40, look at verse 12. And just bear with me today because I can't explain it to you. It's easier to read it in the Word. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? What, what waters? Any waters. Lakes, I mean, you go by Lake Superior, Lake Cham Champagne, Ontario, they look like oceans. They're lakes. If you've ever been there and seen these huge lakes, I'm telling you they look like oceans. So I don't know if he's talking about all the waters of the world. I don't know if he's talking about just one of those. But listen to this. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? God's big, isn't he? Measured heaven with a span. You know what a span is? His hand. Doesn't sound like God's old and little to me. He measures the heavens with a span of his hand and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure. We don't, we don't know how much dust is in the earth. God knows. He's in a measure, he says. There's 14 jillion, trillion, gillion, you know, whatever, but God knows. Weighed the mountains in scales. I don't have a scale that can weigh a mountain. And the hills in a balance. Who has directed the spirit of the Lord? Who is so presumptuous as to direct the spirit of the Lord? Or, has, or as his counselor has taught him. And yet we try to tell God what to do. Where to do it, when to do it, how to do it, and how much time he's got to do it. With whom did he take counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Notice this. Behold, the nations are as a drop in a bucket. All these high-toned dictators, they're a drop in God's bucket and are counted as the small dust on the scales. If you could have seen this film that George showed, you would have seen the size of the earth in relationship to the sun. It was like a, remember when we used to play marbles? It was like a, a peewee compared to a big old giant bowling ball, you know? Look, he sifts up the aisles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor its beasts sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations be before him are as nothing. And they are counted by him less than nothing and worthless. See, the only thing God puts store in is your righteousness. Donald Trump is walking around thinking, man, I'm the greatest thing since popcorn. He's nothing. <laughs> to whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare him to? We are, most of us already have a likeness that we compare him to. I, you know what? I don't even think we understand God. Now, I'm being facetious here today, right? But we picture God, and he's got white flowing hair with a big beard. <clears throat> How do we know God doesn't have a flat top? Well, he couldn't have. Well, that's your conception of God. How do we know God doesn't have a Van Dyke? Or maybe he's clean shaven. I'm, I'm trying to make you think out of the box today. We've got ourselves into these little cubicles Notice this, the workman molds an image. This is how dumb we are. The goldsmith overspreads it with gold. And the silversmith casts silver chains. Whoever is too impoverished for such a contribution chooses a tree that will not rot. So man's going man's to create an image one way or the other. I can't afford one, so I'll find a tree that, that won't rot and I'll make one. He seeks for himself a skillful workman to prepare a carved image that will not totter. You can't totter. 
you know, could be an earthquake. And my, and my godly image might totter over and break. Have, have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sets above the circle of the earth. Now, we lung kids for eons, for centuries, said the earth is square. And be careful about sailing too far because you'll sail off the earth and you'll plummet to nowhere. All they had to do is read the Bible. He sits on the circle of the earth. <laughs> that was too easy. <laughs> and, the inhabit and the inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretch out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He brings the princes to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth useless. Boy, how true that is today. Scarcely, scarcely shall they be planted. Scarcely shall they be sown. Scarcely shall their stock take root in the earth. And the word says that our life is like a vapor. You young people are going, oh, I'm going to live a long life. Your life is like a vapor. I used to think that. I still think in my mind that I'm 18 or I'm 20. When he will also blow on them and then will wither and the whirlwind will take them away like stubble. To whom then will you liken me or to whom shall I be equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things who brings out their host by number. He calls them all by name, by the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my just claim is passed over by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is Weary, We say he never sleeps or slumbers. He, uh, his understanding is unsearchable. He gives, he gives, now, now it gets down. See, he just wanted to let us know. Because somebody's sitting out there saying, I don't believe God can give me power. Well, did you just hear what I just read? He gives power to the weak. Am I glad he's huge? I'm glad he's big. I'm glad that he holds the waters in his, the palm of his hand. Now I can turn to someone bigger than myself. I don't care if God's got a Van Dyke or a Butch haircut. And you know, this is how presumptuous we are. Well, God is white. Well, if you're white, he's white. If you're black, he's black. What if he's orange, blue, yellow, red, green, and has stripes and stars all over him? I, I'm just playing with your mind here today. You, you understand? I'm saying we're silly. We're presumptuous. No, no, God's got long hair. No, no, God wears robes. No, no, God may be wearing Bermuda shorts. I don't know. Neither do you. I don't know what color God is. I don't care. I don't, I don't care if he has a beard or if he doesn't have a beard. I don't care. I just know I need, like the song said, somebody bigger than you and I, right? I need, you know what? I love you guys, but I need somebody bigger than you. <laughs> Thank you for your prayers, but I need somebody bigger than you. Amen? <clears throat> he gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases their strength. Boy, that's what I'm looking for. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. This is what we're saying all the time. We, don't, and we, we, we just sang that part. We should go back and look and see what, what we're singing to. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now, turn over to the book of Numbers with me because we've got to get rolling on this, all right? Talking about amazing faith here today. I 
I love to challenge myself. I, I, I don't want to set limits or bounds on me. I don't want anybody else to. It's fine if you, if you believe this or you believe that or you can't convince me or you can't this or you can't that. But don't try to lay that on me because I'm not going to buy it. I'm not being facetious here this morning. All I know is God is big. <clears throat> big, 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 bigger than I, I can even think of, okay? And I really don't know what color God is. I'm sure all my Hispanic brothers out there are saying, oh, no, he's, he's Hispanic and he loves chili with <clears throat> That's his favorite food. And you may be right. You might be right. I don't know. But, but I can't put you in a white box. You can't put me in a brown box. You can't put, and my great-grandmother was Cherokee, so you can't even put me in a red box, okay? Because <clears throat> I don't know. All I know is what I see here and what I read here is that our God is sufficient. That's why I can stand up for the day and say, I don't know what problems you got, but God just told me you need to prove him because he's going to bring you through your problems. I believe that. And when I read this, I really believe it. Now, in Numbers 13, and we've, st we've studied this a lot, but it's, it's important that you understand. And, and I'm going to make a point about what we just read because, see, you can really be influenced. And you've got to be careful who you hang out with, who you run with, who you listen to. And, 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 and I like to use metaphors, okay, like Jesus. He used metaphors. He used examples. He'd get with a bunch of fishermen. He'd talk about smelly fish and boats and, you know, docks and ropes. And he was with farmers. He talked about seeds and farming and tilling and all of this. I try to encourage you to read the Bible. So I'll, may, I'll, I'll, I'll parallel it with something. What woman doesn't like to go out and buy a brand new dress. Any women here who does not want to buy a brand new dress? What woman here doesn't like to go have her hair fixed? You say that? You're stupid. You're being stupid today. That's what the Bible is. The Bible is a brand new dress. It's makeup. It's a new hairdo. The Bible makes you feel good. You get into the Bible and you read and it gives you hope. It's like, like you look in the mirror and you go, oh my Lord, I got to get to my hairdresser, get my hair dyed, get it off. You come out of there, man, and you feel like a million dollars. You, you feel good. You know, there's, there's no, no sensibility. This, is, this doesn't make sense. You look down and you got fingernails uh, all painted with flowers and jewels and everything all over them. The only reason for that is it makes you feel good. Right? What's wrong with feeling good? I mean, I can remember, this is, this is man, when I was growing up, true story, women could not cut their hair, ever, could never dye their hair, ever, had to wear night clothes to church, because, you know, you couldn't have a dress above your ankle, so the only thing I know is you have to wear a night robe. So everybody looked like they would get, they would come to church, they looked like they were going to bed. No jewelry. I told you this story, I went to a Christian school, the guy said, you've got to take all your rings off. I looked over, and the guy's got a watch on, covered with diamonds and rubies. And I said, well, what about this yo yo yokel? Oh, no, that's useful. Well, then go get a Timex with a leather band. Don't kid a kidder. Don't play games with my mind. There ain't nothing wrong with wearing a fancy watch. Abraham was a rich man. When you study the Bible, they wore good clothes. There ain't nothing cool about being smelly. I hate being around smelly people. I like cologne and, you know, deodorant. I'm glad they invented deodorant. <laughs> we, 
we'd be in a fine mess, right? So, so here, here's, the, here's the point. I listened to that all my life. I mean, you've got to wear white shirts, and they've got to be button-down ones, and you've got to wear a tie, and you've got blah, 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 blah. Esther, they took Esther and sent her to school for a year so she would be fine, a fine little chick for the king. Put her in tubs of, you know, scented water and oil and, you know. We're idiots. We're getting up, some, some old preacher's getting up, man, and he just, you know, and he thinks he's making his points and he's screaming at the top of his lung, making everybody feel like they're Jezebels. and You Jezebels, you know. And they, uh, for a year, they taught her how to put on makeup, smell good. You know, I said this the other day, I've got to be careful because I walk up to a, a lady and I go, boy, you smell good. Wouldn't you rather smell good than bad? So, so the point is, we kind of get caught up in this negativism, you know, this negative, you know, you live with some negative person long enough, you get just like them. You work around them, you get just like the, those people that you work around. You know, most people aren't born gripey. They're contaminated so much with gripiness, they become gripey. We, oh, we have a real bad word that we, you know, but we won't use that today, okay? <laughs> so, so in this, in this I get, get moving, man. I'm eating up my time here. Moses sent them, verse 17, chapter 13 of Numbers, Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains. I do a whole map, I do a whole uh, <clears throat> spiritual mapping per manual on spiritual mapping. People say, well, what do you want to spiritually map? So you know what you're fighting, who you're fighting, the way to fight them. Makes sense to me. I, I tell you, I don't think like the, most people think. It's like I like to learn to... Read between the lines. And see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many. Whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds. That's why we spiritually map. Whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there are, uh, or there are not. Be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. So they went up. They spied out the land. So they went up, spied out the land, from the wilderness of Zen as far as Rehob near the entrance of Hamath. And they went up through the south and came to Hebron, a hymen, uh, Sheshai, and Talmai. The descendants of Anak were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. So it's, a, it's an old, old area. Together they came to the valley of Eshkol. And I can't, uh, my, uh, what's that word? I, my Bible's so old that I can't read the word. Anybody got it? Is that what it said? They are cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes that carried it between two of them on a pole. I should get me another Bible. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. In other words, the fruit was big. It was God's big, so the fruit there was big. And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. And they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran, at Kadesh, they brought back uh, word to them, to all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. Land. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is not, and this is its fruit. Here, here we go. Here, here's who you're living with, who you're working with, who you're talking to, who you're hanging out with. Okay? Now they just brought back, like you... The land is good. The land is neat. It's got everything we need. And by the way, God has already told them, go up and possess the land. And we get critical, but we get sometimes just like them. Nevertheless. That's a key word in a negative person's vocabulary. Nevertheless. Second key word is but. I don't mean this but, I mean but. 
Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong and cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. See, David was smart. See, Goliath had, had four brothers. Remember he took five stones? He believed the word. He said, this guy, this guy's big. I, but I serve a bigger God. That's the point here. And I'm taking, I'm not taking one stone, I'm taking, I'm take, picking five. I'm going to kill him, and if his big brothers come out, I'm going to kill them. Now, I've, I've said this a thousand times. The way I think, I, I don't think my knapsack would have been big enough because I would have picked up 22,000 stones in case I missed. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites, and the Termites, and the, you know, dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. I think that's where they got all these bugs. Now, this is a rare quality. I said all that to say this. See, see, we're talking about a spirit of contamination. You think one spirit won't jump up, jump, jump from one person to another, you hang out with it long enough. Then Caleb, good old Caleb, 40 years old at this time, then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once, take possession, for we, will, we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. There'll always be somebody stronger than you. There'll always be somebody more talented than you, have more money than you, more threatening than you. That's why we need God. That's why we have to serve the God that we're serving. joy of 